In this video, we will introduce the idea of a chemical equation and how it represents a chemical reaction, and then discuss how to balance those equations. First of all, what is a chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is the process where one or more substances are converted into one or more different ones. This means that we're going to be rearranging the atoms in the initial substance or substances to create something that's an entirely new material. In chemistry, this process is represented by a chemical equation. The equations are just shorthand for describing the reactions and always show the starting substances or reactants on the left and ending substances or products on the right. Chemical equations show the chemical formula, the state of matter, and the relative numbers of molecules required to complete the reaction. We've already seen the molecular and empirical formulas used for representing chemical substances, but before we look at full chemical equations, we also need to be familiar with the abbreviations that are used for the different states of matter. For the most part, these are fairly straightforward. We use G for gas, L for liquid, and S for a solid. Another term that will come up and will be extremely important in the upcoming weeks is aqueous. This just means that the compound is dissolved in water. We will look further at what it means to dissolve in upcoming modules, but for now, you just need to know that it is the chemical compound surrounded by water. So let's start our exploration of chemical reactions by looking at an example. The first step in any chemical reaction problem is to write out the reaction, including all the species involved and their states. So here we're looking at methane gas burning or combusting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and gaseous water. So we're going to go ahead and start out by writing down the reactants. So we have methane, CH4, and oxygen. But oxygen is not just an atom, it's a diatomic element. And so this is actually going to be O2. And that's always the case when you're reacting with oxygen or these compounds are both in their gas phase. So I'm gonna go ahead and label those with the G subscript to indicate their gases. Then we need to write out the products. So I'm forming carbon dioxide, which is CO2 and water, or H2O. And again, these we're told are forming gaseous compounds, so I can label those with their phase as well. So if you look closely at this reaction, you may actually notice something a little concerning. On the left-hand side, on the reactants, we actually have four hydrogen atoms. But on the right-hand side, we currently only have two. We also have two oxygen atoms on the, on the reactant side, but three on the product side. We know from the conservation law that matter is never created or destroyed. So we need to balance the equation by changing the number of molecules on, of each type that we have. We can't change the way the atoms are bonded or connected together without actually changing the compound, but we can definitely change how many of each type of molecule that we have. Since I have four hydrogens, on the reactant side and only two on the product side, what I need to do is multiply the number over here by two. So if I multiply the number of hydrogens I have by two, what I'm actually doing is multiplying the number of molecules of water that I have by two. So this now gives me four hydrogens. So after multiplying by two, I now have four hydrogens on the product side and four on the reactant side. So that's now what we would call balanced. We also need to make sure the rest of our elements are balanced. So on the reactant side, we currently have two oxygens, but now on the product side, we have two oxygens coming from the water and also two coming from the carbon dioxide. So now we have four oxygens after multiplying by two. And so I can get four oxygens on the reactant side as well, by multiplying the number of O2 molecules I have by two. So now I again have four oxygens on the reactant side and four on the product side. And then the last element in this equation is carbon. 
and there's one carbon atom on each side, so I don't need to do anything else with that. So for the balanced combustion reaction of methane, we need to combine one methane with two O2 molecules to create one CO2 molecule and two water molecules. In the process of balancing an equation, we need to adjust the number of molecules so that they're equal numbers of each type of atom on both sides of the equation. And we balance those by changing the coefficients in front of the reaction and not the subscripts. So the coefficients affect how many of each type we have, the subscripts affect the identity of the molecule itself. Now let's look at another example that's slightly more complex. Here we want to write a balanced equation for the reaction between solid cobalt-3 oxide and solid carbon to produce solid cobalt and carbon dioxide gas. First, we start out by writing all the compounds involved. This is also known as the skeletal equation. In this case, the skeletal equation involves cobalt-3 oxide. Cobalt-3 is going to be CO with a 3 plus, and oxygen is O with a 2 minus. And so in order to get the charge there to balance, we need two cobalts and three oxygens. Solid carbon is just the C atom, and then it's producing solid cobalt, which is C with a little o, solid, and, and carbon dioxide gas. After we have the skeletal equation, then we look at balancing the atoms on each side of that equation. There are not strict rules for which element you should balance first, but beginning with the more complex substances will typically make things easier. In this case, we would probably start by balancing the oxygen, which is involved in the cobalt oxide as well as the carbon dioxide. So we count the number of oxygen atoms on each side. Right now, on the reactant side, I have three oxygen atoms. On the product side, there are two. If I multiply the reactant side by two and the product side by three, I change both of those numbers to six, and my oxygen atoms are going to be balanced on both sides of the equation. Then I need to check the other elements which in this case are carbon and cobalt. So right now on the left hand side, I have four cobalt atoms. Each formula unit of cobalt oxide contains two cobalt atoms and I have two of those formula units for a total of four cobalt atoms on the left hand side. And I currently have one on the right hand side. I can easily multiply the products by four to produce four cobalt atoms on both sides of the equation. The same thing happens with carbon. I have one carbon atom on the reactant side and three on the product side. So I just need to multiply the reactant side by three to balance out my carbon atoms. At this point, if there were any fractions in the balanced equation, we would need to multiply by the value in the denominator to get whole numbers. This can easily happen when you're dealing with diatomic elements as we will see in the next example. But for now, we don't need to worry about this step. So finally, we just need to double check that what we've done actually balances the equation. We look at the number of each element on both sides of the equation, and we see that we have four cobalt atoms, six oxygen atoms, and three carbon atoms. And this is the same on both sides. So our equation here is fully balanced. Let's take a look at one more example. In this reaction, we're going to be writing a balanced equation for the combustion of gaseous butane, which is combining with gaseous oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So again, I start out by writing my reactants, which is butane, and I'm going to be reacting that with oxygen. Again, oxygen is a diatomic, so I use O2, and I'm reacting those to form carbon dioxide and water. So I've written out the skeletal equation. The next thing we want to do is start balancing. In this case, the most complex element would be considered hydrogen or carbon, since it's involved in compounds on both sides of the equation. Oxygen it appears as an element on the reactant side, and so that's going to make it easier to balance at the end, and so we'll leave that to last. Let's go ahead and start out with the number of carbon atoms. On the left-hand side, I have four 
carbon atoms. And on the product side, I only have one. So I can multiply my product by four to give us four CO2. And that means that I then have balanced the carbon part. For the hydrogens, I have 10 on the reactant side. On the product side, I have two hydrogens. But if I multiply that by five, I end up with 10. So I will go ahead and do that. Right now, I have two oxygens on the reactant side. And two times four is eight, plus five is 13 on the product side. Now, so there's no easy way for me to multiply two oxygens to get 13 oxygens. However, I can go ahead and use a fraction at this point and multiply by 13 over two. This would give me 13 oxygens on the reactant side, and I also have 13 on the product side. Again, this is a temporary step where I'm just gonna go ahead and use a fraction because it's gonna make my life easier in the end. At this point, I have the same number of each type of element on each side of the equation. However, I don't want to have fractions in my final answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply everything through by two. So I have two butane molecules plus 13 O2, and that's forming eight CO2 molecules and 10 water molecules. As the final step, I just wanna check that everything is actually balanced. So I have four times two or eight carbon atoms on the reactant side. I also have eight carbon atoms on the product side. I have 10 times two or 20 hydrogen atoms on the reactant side and 10 times two or 20 hydrogen atoms on the product side. And then finally, I have 13 times two or 26 oxygen atoms on the reactant side. And then I have 16 plus 10 oxygen atoms, which is also 26 on the product side. This is now the final form of my balanced equation. Here's one more situation you may encounter, which is when polyatomic ions are involved. Remember that polyatomic ions should always be thought of as a single unit. So these can also be balanced as a single unit. At this point, I recommend you can try to work this one out before watching the solution. As you know, the only way you can really understand chemistry is to actually do the chemistry.